Hey dudes, Bandersnatch here with the first ever Ableton Live cheat. This is the first video in a new series that'll either show you stuff that can't be done or a bunch of techniques that are so easy and or sound so awesome that you'll feel like you're cheating. For a few years now, whenever teaching people about drum racks inside of Ableton Live, I keep getting asked this question. But Vladimir, how can you warp the samples that you put on pads? I want them to match the tempo like you can do with clips. And for the longest while, my answer to that was, you can't. But then at one point I remembered a neat trick that I used when building a hardware granular synth back in the UK. And when I tried it with Sampler inside of Ableton Live, Eureka! The first thing I did was to record some guitar and make a full little sound tool to perform with. You can check out a neat video of me playing with it here. And you can download the whole project file complete with tempo mapped samples at my Patreon page. But first things first. We need to record a sample, so let's record a guitar riff real quick. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna need a mic. Done. Now, on to the cheat. I also made a video where I explain how audio warping and time stretching works inside of Ableton Live. And if you haven't watched it, I suggest you take a look, because everything I'll go through here is based on that. If you can't check it out right now, the gist of it is that most time stretching works by taking really small portions called grains from a recording or sample, looping those grains, and then moving the loop start point or grain position along the sample from beginning to end. In the video, I used automation inside of a MIDI clip to move the loop point along, but maybe you don't want to use clips at all, and just have your samples match your project tempo at all times. There must be a way to move that grain along the sample automatically without having to use automation or clips. Turns out there is, and it's right here in Sampler. But first, we need to make sure that the recording that we're going to import into Sampler is of the exact length that we want to play when launching the sample from the pad. So if the sample is meant to play for one bar, the imported recording should be exactly one bar. We'll get to why in just a bit. Right now, this guitar bit is not exactly the length that we want. So what we're gonna do is pre-warp it and make sure that it's on time and at the correct length after which we're going to consolidate it to make sure that the warped and trimmed version is our new sample being imported. Cool. Now with that out of the way, just drag and drop the sample into Sampler. We'll select a decently short loop at the very beginning of the sample, which will act as our grain, while the loop length will be the grain size. The trick is to now move the loop along the sample at a rate that's equal to the length of a bar. We can do that by going into the Modulation tab and turning on LFO2. We're going to select a rising sawtooth as its shape and set its rate to be in sync with the project tempo, with the cycle length of one bar. Now, if the imported sample was two bars long, then we'd select two bars here and so on. You can go all the way up to eight bars if you want, but I imagine most people will go for shorter loops. Another thing we need to do is make sure retrigger is on. Now we can assign this tempo sync sawtooth LFO to the loop start point, set the amount to 100% and voila, the sample will play at the exact same rate as the project tempo, as if by magic. The secret here is that the LFO moves the loop along the whole sample that's been imported. So if the imported sample length is one bar, and the cycle length of the LFO is also one bar synced to the project tempo, then the sample will play back at the exact same speed. That's why a differently sized sample on import wouldn't sync. If the sample length doesn't match the LFO cycle length, the sound will play back faster or slower than the project tempo, according to how much the LFO needs to go through over the duration of one bar. Now, on the other hand, it's obvious that you can play around with this as well, for instance, doubling the LFO cycle length to play the sample at halftime or other cool tricks. After this initial setup, there's a few more tricks we can apply to smooth out the sound, 
like moving the loop just a bit farther inward and applying a bit of crossfade, which will marginally offset the sample timing but get rid of all those nasty clicks. We can also assign the auxiliary envelope to the loop length. Then we can map the envelope points to a macro knob which will give us a bit of control over grain size. Other neat tricks I found include using a chord MIDI effect to change the timbre of the sound by adding differently pitched layers playing at the exact same rate. Anyway, this opens up a whole new avenue for experimentation with timing inside drum racks, which is pretty awesome. That's it dudes, thanks for watching! If you want more, you can head out to my Patreon page to download this month's Grain Synced Sound Tool used in the Bandersnatch Checkers video. Or check out episode 1 of the Ableton Live Explained series about Ableton Live Warping. You can also like and comment or subscribe if you want more stuff like this in your feed. Cheers dudes, have an awesome day.